Hey everybody. So Thompson and I did an Instagram story the other day about doing some YouTube vlogs. And one that we had a lot of questions on was our tree stand setup. So people were really wondering about our camera setup in the tree stand, but I'm gonna kind of break down all of our tree stand stuff, where we, what we do with our bows, what we do with our cameras, how we get into the tree, all that kind of stuff. I wasn't able to drive on down to the Kansas City, so my parents' backyard's gonna have to work. All right, so the first thing we consider when looking at a tree, besides location, of course, of like, is this gonna be a good deer hunting spot? When we finally find a location, a spot that we like, finding the tree. We look at girth, we look at straightness of tree, we look at like when you're 20 feet up in a tree, are there a bunch of branches there? What kind of clearing are you gonna need to do? Depending on the type of tree you have, let me see, I knew I threw it over here. You can use a few different things. This, these pegs, this is what Thomas and I first started using when we got into deer hunting. They're super cheap. You can buy them at Shields for like a buck something each of them. Basically, you just squeeze into the tree and you can climb your way up. Just one for your right foot, one for your left foot. You're grabbing onto them as you go up and just kind of shimmy up that way. And the other one are kind of these sticks. I'll show you. There are a bunch of different types of climbing sticks out there that you can use. These are the muddy ones and basically you just wrap them around the tree. We use a bunch of different types of them. I have noticed with these muddies, using them last season, they do squeak a little bit going up the tree, especially when it got cold out, these started to squeak pretty bad. The best ones I found, um, which I could put a link below in this video, were the River's Edge sticks. I got them at Shields here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and they were the cheapest ones, and it seems to be the most heavy duty, super lightweight, packable, um, and very quiet and a lot cheaper than these. Um, but I mean, all six work out pretty much the same way. Some are quieter, easier to pack than others. So that's something that you guys can figure out pretty easy. Here's this muddy stick. Put it on this four by four beam so you can just see it really easy. Basically just loop that rope around your so-called tree. So other kind I showed you is just uh, screwable. Just take your tree, twist it in, so on and so forth until you've got a sturdy foothold and grab. Thompson and I use the sticks versus these pegs for different types of trees. If the tree has a bunch of knobs or a bunch of branches and putting sticks in it isn't gonna be possible because you need to have a few feet of open tree, these work great. Next is tree stand setup. No, it's not. It's safety. We cannot harp on safety enough. As soon as you can get up into a tree or maybe you can throw one of these hunter safety systems up into the tree, get the hunter safety system in there and get your harness on and get connected. These hunter safety systems, these lifelines, are literally lifelines. If you deer hunt, you need to be wearing one of these. All right, here's the basic gist. Where is it? Here it is. The base of your tree when you're about to go up, open this clip, attach it in here, tighten it. This knot, you can just slide up with you as you go up or as you go down but as soon as you have tension on it, it's gonna catch you. So as soon as you're attached, now you're ready to go up the tree. I'm obviously on the ground here. So I'm gonna detach so that I can show you guys how we put in tree stand stuff. Here's the basic gist of how we do a tree stand. First thing, depending on the size of the tree, the uh, the strap on the tree stand may or may not fit. This big tree right here, it won't fit, but the trees that Thompson and I sit in, it always fits, and I'll show you right here. This strap right here that holds onto the tree stand, 
goes around, but you can see it's too short there. And then it would usually connect to this right here. But this tree's so big that uh, we didn't use it. And uh, we have done sets when we don't use it, but usually that's the easiest way to do it when you are when you have a tree that you can reach that around just to tighten that quick before you put on these other straps. The next thing Thompson and I do is two ratchet straps. Um, sometimes we'll do one, most of the time we'll do two. Two just makes you feel a whole lot better when you're in this thing. So as you can see, we usually put one low and then one higher up. Sometimes we'll even put the strap up here to just give you the sturdiest base possible and make you feel safe up there because that's what's important. And you've got all of that, you should feel just fine. Take a step up into the old tree stand. There are a few points of contact you want to make sure you have with your tree stand. At the base, there's a few pegs that go into the tree there. You can see this one. And then up top, you want to make sure those two pegs right here are on the tree because that's what's going to keep you sturdy. If those are off, then the tree stand may not be that secure. Setting these things up is hard. For all the whitetail hunters out there that have done it for a few years, I mean, it doesn't really get easier. You gotta always have somebody with you um, because when you're up there in a tree, you're already a little on edge. Putting one of these things up and putting your arms around a tree can get pretty dicey. For camera setup, this is what we would do. We want the base of our tree stands to be pretty close. So this would be, say this is the low tree stand, this would be the hunter's tree stand. We would bring our camera tree stand only, I mean, as close to even as possible, but if the tree allows it, within a foot or two of the base of the bow hunter's tree stand. We always have the cameraman above the shooter so that he can get the angle of being above the hunter and um, also, he can film the hunter coming up, things like that. Now, I'll show you our camera setup in the tree. All right, here's our tree stand camera setup. The camera arms and bases that we use for filming are all fourth arrow. If you want to get into filming hunts, fourth arrow is your go-to. They make this base and they also make these. They also make the actual tree arms go like so. All right, so you get the gist. Ratchet straps make the base tight. Camera arm gives you the tripod to be able to film on. Now, you need a tool. This. There you go. What this tool does is go in this hole right here. There's a bunch of holes around this thing. And this loosens and tightens and adjusts this camera arm so that it's level. All right, so here is the leveled out camera arm. Makes you be able to do this stuff. Throw it on your tripod. Just light. And when you're in the tree stand, big buck, big buck, big buck. Steady footage all the way around. We've done time lapses, but I'm way more still now. We've done time lapses from these things. I mean, you can get super still footage. Um, pros and cons of these things. Gotta trim this tree better. Gee whiz. Shooting hazard, but. 
pros and cons. One con, which is like the only con, is they're kind of noisy. So like the adjusting with this tool, this makes noise. And then also the ratchet straps, of course. I mean, just like anything, it's gonna make noise too. Um, so what we have done is we've bought a few different bases um, that you put the camera arm into so that we can leave those bases in different trees so that in the morning we just climb up in there, throw our camera arm in, no noise, good to go. Still footage on the way. Still footage B-roll. We use two cameras at all times in the tree stand. Now, our main camera that we shoot a lot of the hunting stuff with is this Canon 5D Mark IV. And we will have that with this lens actually that's on there right now, a 16 to 35 millimeter, which is a very wide lens. So we'll have that with one camera arm, and then we'll have another base and camera arm with a longer lens on there. Usually we've got our Panasonic Lumix GH5 that we shoot with, and our 70 to 200 millimeter glass. Let me go get that quick. Boom, here it is. This is our other camera setup. So usually we film the hunter with the camera that's filming me right now with our Canon with a wide, wide angle so that we can get the hunter drawing his or her bow back, my wide angle high, and then my larger deer filming camera, more waist level. The wide angle one, I'll just leave stationary, won't really touch it unless I move it for interviews and B-roll. I'll always have that on the hunter at all times, so all I have to do is move my arm over there, click record, and it's filming the hunter. And then the other camera that I film the deer on, I'll have it hands-on filming with the tripod. All right, so that's basically it for the camera gear. Two cameras running, one filming the animal, Wide angle filming the hunter. Boom. Tree stands, pretty close. Um, now for the hunting side of things. We're archery guys, as you probably know. Um, so we always do the bow hanger. Mom's gonna love this in her backyard tree. Sorry, Mom. I've used this long, like three arm hanger a lot, but this is what it does. See that? Not good for in the tree stand. So lately I've gone to just a two section, really short one that's just a little firmer. I think this one's nice, but it's just too long. So the weight of the bow just outweighs everything. It's dirtier like that. If you don't have it all the way extended. And then the other thing that is a must for us in the tree stand when we're filming our hunts is a backpack. All these tree arms, bases, bow gear. If you're a whitetail guy, you probably got some synth control stuff with you. You probably got an extra layer. You probably got who knows what. Long day in the tree, you've got some snacks. We also also hang this up in here. I'll hang my rattling antlers over there. Um, that's basically up our, our setup. Um, have a comfortable tree. Life's too short to sit in a bad tree for hours. Um, get yourself a nice, comfortable tree, be safe at all times, and just kind of play with these things. Like, it's taken a few years for Thompson and I to figure out what really works for these camera setups, for our bow setups. I've made the mistake of having my, my, uh, my bow holder arm thing too low, so I have to like reach down for it. When in reality, like this one right here, if I was going to shoot a buck, all I'd have to do is one of these, take it off, Pull back and mm, let her eat. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Kind of a more informative vlog. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop them below. Um, if you've used any of this equipment and like it and don't like it, I'd like to hear what you guys think too. As you know, we use some muddy stuff, we use some fourth arrow stuff. We don't work or are, we're not sponsored by any of these companies. So we just kind of use what works for us. And this has been a pretty good setup. So thanks for watching, guys.